Hello there everyone, Oversoul here, and I wanted to start this week off by doing just a little bit of talking about the PlayStation VR. Well, I have the time anyways. Um, I just wanted to let you know also that, um, so this will be my first video for today, it's a little bit late, sorry about that, I'll try to make sure the others aren't, but, um, later today you should get episode 2 of Until Dawn Rush of Blood, and, um, a, either a let's play of the VR version of Thumper or episode 2 of VR Worlds, which is Danger Ball. And of course, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and VR Worlds are ones that I'm going to keep playing until I finish them. As far as Here They Lie goes, I'm going to finish it, but I might wait for them to patch it or if they ever patch it before I keep going because I just, it's annoying the whole veering left thing. And if they don't patch it, then I'm just going to wait for the non VR version and then finish it that way. That's just. If they want me to finish that game, they're going to have to fix the problem. Um, outside of that, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about the PlayStation VR itself and um, my thoughts so far, uh, my opinions, and uh, I'm enjoying it. And if you're getting tired of all the PlayStation VR stuff on my channel, because it's been nothing but that this past week, basically, well, for the past couple, all weekend, anyways... So it was nothing but that since Thursday, and it's going to be pretty much a lot of VR stuff for the upcoming week up until the weekend, because this weekend I'm having family and friends, well, a couple of friends and family over. We're going to play the PlayStation VR, they're going to get a chance, and I'm going to try to record multiplayer sessions of PlayStation, uh, the Playroom VR, and keep talking and nobody explodes. So, um, we're going to try to get those in there, but outside of that, my system thought it was talking to, I was talking to it because of the microphone. Anyways, outside of that, um, back, it thinks I'm, <laughs> god damn it. Anyways, outside of that, um, I'm going to try to get back to doing my regular Let's Plays here of uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, my Let's Replay of the first Tomb Raider, Let's Replay Kingdom Hearts 2, I'm going to finish Valley, I'm going to finish Song of the Deep. We'll get back to that in a moment, but right now it's all about that VR, you know, got to do what's popular in the get-go, <laughs> get people's attention. But anyways, um, so let's talk about the PlayStation VR a little bit, shall we? I just wanted to give kind of a in-depth analysis of what I think now that I've had a chance to play it. Um, okay, so, as you can see, I was confused by the cable setup in my original video, but there's no reason to be confused anymore, and I thought it might help some people, or maybe some people who don't have the VR yet, but plan on getting it to kind of know how to do this. Okay, so, these weird cables I was wondering about at the end of it here, um, one of these, they are both HDMI, except that one of them is shaped a little bit weird, um... And it's shaped exclusively that way because it only works with this. Because that that one, this one is meant to go um, between the headset and the system itself. And then the regular HDMI is what sends the second screen image out to the TV. And here you have this little... I found out that this is how you turn it on. And then the microphone, there's a microphone built into the pair of earbuds you get with this. You can turn that on and off with this. And then, of course, your volume controls and you plug the earbuds in here. Now let me tell you, those little earbuds they came with, Sony has always been really good at sound. So those little earbuds this came with, fantastic. Fantastic audio quality. And um, what's even cooler about them is that, I mean, you pretty much could only use them for this because um, <laughs> they're really short. All right, so if you look, not only is like the cable itself like really short that reaches to this part, you know, because it doesn't need to be that long, but if you look, the earbuds themselves are not the same length. One is, like, really, really short, and the other one is really long. And that's because that's supposed to help you determine which one goes in which ear. This really short one is supposed to go in your left ear because it's closest to this thing which lays on your side, and this right one is, this other one's supposed to go in your right ear, the longer one. Um... And then, of course, this cable that I didn't know what it was <laughs> is basically just a six-foot extension cable for this. So after this gets plugged into the back of your little processor box, you just plug these into here, and voila, now your headset can reach up to six feet. And I think at its longest, it's going about, yeah. <coughs> Let's see. 
you can't see it on camera, but my processor box is literally right here, okay? So, let's see how far this baby can stretch. Yeah, I can get all the way to my window over here. Look at this. Let's take a wide circular motion. Whew. It can go behind my couch over here. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of, they give you plenty of space to work with. For standing games, sitting games, they give you a lot of cord-based leeway. A lot of cord-based leeway. Okay. So let me talk a little bit more about it. Just some more of the technical specifications on the outside. So how does the PlayStation VR work exactly? Well, that's something that um, a lot of people are wondering about because it's console-based VR, and it doesn't have the same you know, special technologies as the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. And of course, the Gear VR is all on your phone. It uses your phone as a screen which sits right there in the headset, so it's obvious how that works. But this, well, on the headset itself, and as you've probably seen in my Let's Plays, there are little LED lights all around the son of a bitch. Just, you know, all of these little lights. They all light up, and there's a couple in the back as well. And the PlayStation camera is able to track your movement in real time. It uses the lights on the headset to be able to tell which way you're looking. So when you turn your head right, the camera sees the lights on the left side here, and it's like, oh shit, those are the left side lights of the headset, which means the player must have turned their head right. And so the game movement matches. Everything is really fluid. It all happens like that. There's hardly any lag, any latency whatsoever. It's barely even noticeable, even if you do notice it. And you'd have to be, like, super privileged to notice it. <laughs> like, or, like, super nitpicky. It's like, it, 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 it's like maybe a smidgen of a couple milliseconds at most, you know? Um, I think 18 milliseconds is about the most it goes up to, and I think the highest that you can get away with in VR without any effects, side effects, is 20. So 18 is perfectly fine for VR. No problem there whatsoever. And it's so, like, it's probably one of the easiest headsets out of all of them out there to put on because you just push this button and then you just pull this back and then you just put it on your head and then you, like, release the button and it, like, snugly fits and then you can tighten it with this little thing right there and then when you actually go to put the headset on and you want to adjust the screen you just push the button on here and you move the screen in and out to and from your face um it's also one of the easiest setups that they've ever done for a playstation vr headset because you literally just put it on it downloads a quick firmware update and you're good to go your playstation menu is literally right there in front of you like in a big cinematic screen like you're floating in a black void and right there in front of you is a big screen and all of your ps4 shits on it it's all of it. And then once you launch a VR game, um, something that the PS4 has never done before, because it never needed to, but now it does, it actually switches uh, resolution when you, uh, when you go into VR games. So, like, on the PS3, sometimes you'd notice when you'd start a game, sometimes the screen would flash, and then it would, and then it would come back, like your TV signal went off and came back on. That's because the, it was switching resolutions. The PS3's XMB is on 1080p, but hardly any PS3 game actually ran at 1080p. Most of them ran at 720. So the PS3 would always force your TV to change its resolution to 720 when you started a game. But PlayStation VR is doing the same thing now, so you might get a screen flash on the screen itself when you start a game. Um, so fair warning, something I learned the hard way. If you are recording VR games and you... Um, if you are recording PlayStation VR games and you use a capture device that plugs in via HDMI, you have to wait until the VR game starts before you start recording. Otherwise, when... It, the PS4 forces a resolution change, your recording will stop because it recognizes it as a new input. <laughs> so, um, but that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So the resolution will change because the resolution on the second screen is actually 1080 by 960. But that's the other thing I was impressed by. What I've noticed from like the Gear VR and stuff, when it, when it cuts off one of the eyes images and crops it, it's usually like in a very smushed square by four by three ratio. The PlayStation VR, both eyes are 1080 by 960, so one eye's image is going to be 1080 by 960. So what you get is an almost full 1080 image. It's just that it's 1080 by 960, so you're getting 1080 pixels vertically, but you're only getting 960 horizontally. So there's like a small sliver of the left and right side of the image cutoff. 
Um, but it's so like it still it still fills most of the screen, which is something I was impressed with because that's like a problem with some of the others. The other cool thing is that there's hardly any screen door effect in here. There's still something, you know, the 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 the, the, the quality isn't perfect. The visuals aren't perfect. Like obviously it's a console VR, so you're going to have console level graphics, but in VR, it may it doesn't make as much of a difference. When you're in virtual reality, what matters most is the frame rate and the field of view, which are both tremendous, might I add. Um, none of these games on here, on this VR, are running at 60 frames. I think they're all running above it. Maybe some of them are at 60, but most of them, like I've played Thumper, I've played VR Worlds and so much stuff. They all feel like they're running at at least 90, if not 120 frames for some of them. And of course, you guys are only seeing it at 60 on my channel because I have no way of recording them in their true frame rate. But, um, and, you know, I can't stress this enough. Nothing I've ever said, but, like, VR is just not, just watching a video of it is not good enough. You have to get out there and try it for yourself because, like, I can sit there and I can talk to them blue in the face and, like, you see me play Batman Ar Arkham VR and I'll be like, oh, that water wheel is so huge. And you're looking at it and you're like, it just looks like a picture to me. But to me, I'm there and I can see, I'm, I'm act I actually have to look up and it's towering over me. It's an intimidating. It's just that you have to try it to know. You know, it feels real. And when you're playing Until Dawn and the roller coaster starts j j veering and jeering and shit and it's like, wee! It feels like I'm riding a goddamn roller coaster. And then when they start throwing shit at me, it feels like, oh, fuck. So it's pretty goddamn real. That's why horror in VR is so intense. And you gotta be very careful about it if you're, like, prone to heart attacks and shit. <coughs> now, the little processor box that it came with that I showed you guys before is a pretty nifty little device because that's pretty much what handles, like, the 3D audio and everything. And let me tell you, the 3D audio is fucking amazing. The 3D audio, so no matter which way you turn your head, the audio will always change to compensate. And like if you're playing one of your regular games or watching a movie something on the big floating cinematic screen, if you turn to look around, which you're not going to see anything because it's all darkness, but when you turn, you're in your ears, you'll hear like, if you're looking at the screen and you decide to look to the right, you will hear this, since the screen is now to your left, you will hear all the noise from that screen coming from your left. It's not just going to put all the game audio directly into your earbuds like it normally would. It, it treats it as if you're actually sitting there looking at that screen like if you were in a movie theater or something. So you turn your head right, audio comes to the left. You turn your head left, audio comes from the right. Turn all the way around, it comes from fucking behind you, and it actually sounds like it's coming from behind you. That's the cool thing about that 3D audio. I don't know how they did it, but it's so cool. I don't know how they managed to make this a console VR headset so good. I mean, granted, it is PlayStation, but I'm just a tiny bit biased. But they just, they just, they, it's so good for a console at VR. That's the part that's the most impressive. Granted, there are a few, you know, like when you're playing like the kitchen demo, for example. It's a mostly stationary experience. When I was looking around, I could see the jaggies around some of the images, like the fan sitting on top of the fridge and stuff. It was just like jagged edges all around. And you know, that's something you're gonna have to deal with because it's a console VR game. And that's not prominent in every game though. Like when I'm playing Until Dawn Rush of Blood or like when I played the London Heist VR, everything was super smooth. There was no jaggies whatsoever. Images off in the distance tend to suffer a little bit and textures kind of like pop in as you get closer to them. But that doesn't matter as much in a lot of these games because that only matters in something like Here They Lie or something where you're actually moving around, whereas some of these other experiences are, you know, mostly stationary. But one thing I did notice, and I didn't even think about this before, I didn't even know that they could do this, because I swear to God I thought this was like an HTC Vive room scale thing, but no. PlayStation VR allows for moving around your room. Well, not fully, because it's not room scale, because HTC Vive has this, like, put cameras up in all your corners shit for room scale. And this doesn't have that, but what it does have is it has, in certain games like Job Simulator, Batman Arkham, and stuff like that, um, or like Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, the Blood, Mo uh, Blood Ties add-on, if you stand up and you start moving around, as long as the camera can see you, your character will actually move around in the game. If you duck down, your character will duck down in the game. If you jump, your character will jump in the game. Everything matches your head movement. It's like one-to-one -one perfectionate head movement tracking. It's so cool. So if I'm standing here and I'm playing one of these and I start like going over here and stuff, 
like in the game, it will it will accommodate for that. I didn't know PlayStation VR had moving around your room shit. And now that I know that, that just makes it even better, you know? So super impressed with this. Some of the games need a little fixing. Riggs makes it. <laughs> so far, the only game that's made me sick was Riggs Mechanized Combat League. And I started to get a little bit of a headache after playing Danger Ball, but that's because Danger Ball is played mostly with your head and you're sitting there and it's like Pong, but you gotta like, uh, 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 and then like when you wanna like spike the ball, you gotta, uh, you gotta like jar your head forward and it's like, <coughs> it can give you a headache after a while because it starts to like get really fast and you gotta like, <coughs> you gotta like move your head everywhere. It's ridiculous, but. It wasn't motion sickness, it was just a headache for me, like, knocking my brain around too much. That's what that was. I did get motion sickness from Ray, uh, Riggs Mechanized Combat League because it's just too much with the having to, like... First of all, they move really fast, and then you gotta turn the right stick to turn the robot and turn your head to aim your weapon. It's just too much turning on top of moving, like, 50 miles per hour. And then they jump, like, 20 feet in the air, and then they come down like the fucking Hulk. Whoosh, and then you just get, like, this... Like this, like, sense of falling, which I don't like, and it just, like, your asshole jumps up into your throat, and it's like, ah! Drive Club, on the other hand, made some people sick, but I loved it. Granted, I just can't drive for shit, but when I was in there, and then I would take the turns, and it felt so real, my car would slide, because I suck at racing games. It would go, Argh! and then I would, like, slam into a wall, but before slamming into a wall, I would, like, realistically brace for impact, like, oh, shit, and then it would go, Kroom! and I would go, Ugh! like, I would actually flinch, like, I actually, it, it was crazy. And then, like, when I got up to really high speeds and started taking the turns in the hills, I got, like, that realistic, like, if you're driving fast for real kind of thing, where your stomach goes all, like, ooh, roller coaster adrenaline. It was cool. Um, some pretty fun, realistic stuff. I played the demo for Drive Club, by the way. I don't own that one, but, um... You know, that's why it's a good thing, that's one of the other impressive things, they came out with this 18 disc demo disc, or 18 game demo disc to help people discover which things they can and cannot handle in VR. That's what that demo disc is for. So you can actually, because what makes you sick and what doesn't is going to be different for everyone because everybody's different. You know, everybody's bodies can handle different things. So with that being the case, <sighs> Thought I'd give a little analysis on this. Yeah, super impressed with the PlayStation VR. Super impressed. And the most, the, the move controllers are the parts that get me the most. Because, let's be honest here, these things were garbage on the PS3. I mean, they were okay, but they were really not that great. And I think a lot of it has to do with the PlayStation 3's eye cam not being that good. Um, because on the PlayStation 4, they work tremendously well, or at least they work well enough for what you're using them for. And let me tell you, hand controls in VR games, being able to pick shit up and mess with it, fuck with it, and shoot, like, it's, oh, it's so cool! Like, I can't even begin to explain it, oh. But anyways, I'm out of time for this recording, so I just wanted to give this analysis. Love the PlayStation VR so far, so cool. So cool. Definitely pick yourself up one of these. Jacksepticeye guys, right. This is going to be the, the headset that sells VR to the masses. This is the most ex accessible, most affordable, because not everyone has a Samsung phone, obviously, but a lot of people have PlayStation 4s. Um, and I would even, I would put this even above the Gear VR, because if you want to experience VR, yeah, sure, the mobile one is a good introduction rate, but if you want to experience real VR, this is the way to go. So... Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Oversoul. This is the PlayStation VR. Go get yourself one. It's so fucking cool. All right, have yourself a fantastic day. Goodbye.